Hey everyone, Simon here from Top Tennis Training and in this video I want to help you hit the perfect return of serve in three simple steps. So step number one to hitting the perfect return is the ready position and your split step timing. Now there's a big debate about when you should split step on the return of serve and a lot of it depends on the opponent you're playing. So if I'm playing someone with a weak serve, I don't have to time my split step perfectly. Whereas if I'm serving, if I'm returning, sorry, against someone with a really big serve, my split step timing has to be almost perfect. Otherwise I'll be late for the return and I just won't be in position. So first thing, the ready position, you want to have a wide base when you're waiting. And when you go into the split step, you want to have a wide base and also be quite low. So this athletic position that you hear a lot of coaches talk about. So from the side, it's gonna be something like this. And from the front, it's gonna be here. Now that's my waiting position prior to going into the split step. If you look at players like Federer and Djokovic, when they're waiting, so Federer actually changes the way he goes into that split step. Sometimes he steps forward and does a, a step and then a split. And sometimes he split steps on the spot. Now, some players like Andy Murray, they take a big step forward and then they go into the split step. split steps before the big one. Whichever one works best for you, keep doing that. If you prefer a step forward, that's great. And if you prefer the more Djokovic or Agassi style, when you're waiting on the same spot and the momentum is only going forward after the split step, that's also fine but you need that split step. Now the timing of the split step, once again, will be determined by the opponent you're playing, but in general, you're landing when they make contact. So when your opponent makes contact on the other side of the court, that's when you're landing, that's when you're able to then push off, because if you're returning a player who has a big serve, you've got about a 0.5 seconds to return that. So if I'm playing someone like when we filmed with Sam Groff, I had even less time. Oh my gosh. Oh. So if my timing is a little bit off, I'm gonna be late for that return. So it's crucial that I time that split step when the person makes contact or around the time of contact, I'm landing. Now it could be slightly later, but not too late because if the ball's already traveling over the net and you're still in the air, you're gonna be late on that return. Now the ready position, you want to be holding the bottom hand. so. Regardless if you're one-hander or two-hander, you want to be holding with the forehand grip. Now many of you might be thinking, but the player is going to serve to my backhand, so shouldn't I be holding it in my backhand grip? Well, even if you're a single-hander, you've got that top hand to help you, but on the forehand side, it's a hard change to go from a backhand grip, let's say an eastern backhand grip, over to a semi-western forehand grip. So the reason we hold it with the forehand grip is because you've got that top hand. This is my left hand because I'm a right-handed player. I've got my right hand in the forehand grip. If it comes to my forehand, it's easy. I don't have to swing uh, with my left hand holding the throat. I can let go very early and I can prepare the racket head with that forehand grip. If it comes to my backhand, I have that top hand which can help me change the grip. So I've got my forehand grip now. It comes to my backhand, I'm a one-handed player. I change it over and then I can hit the return. If I'm a two-hander, I've got the left hand holding the grip for my double-hander and I've got the bottom hand holding the grip with my uh, forehand grip. So I've got my forehand grip on the bottom and I've got my backhand grip on the top. If it comes to the forehand, once again I release 
and I'm ready to hit. If it comes to my back end, I've got the top hand to help me change the grip over. That's the reason we hold it in the forehand grip. Now, if I hold it in a backhand grip and I'm a single hander, this is what's gonna happen. If it comes to my backhand, great. If it comes to my forehand now, this is quite a hard change to do, especially if you don't have much time. It's the exact same thing for the two-handers. If I'm holding with the backhand grip in that ready position and the opponent serves to my backhand, okay, that's fine. If they serve to my forehand now, now I have to change and once again, it's just not ideal. So the ideal waiting position is a nice wide base. You're timing your split step when the opponent makes contact and you're holding the bottom hand in the forehand grip. So that was step number one to having the perfect return. Step number two is now the swing on the return of serve. So, once we land on the split step, we should start to see where the ball is going. We should start to see if it's coming to our forehand or to our backhand. That initial step will always be forward. We don't want to be chasing the ball backwards and to the side. We want to be cutting off the return by going forward. Now the only way to do that is by having a short backswing. If I have a big backswing, I just will be, simply I'll be late. So if I have a big backswing, if I take my normal backswing and I try to make contact in front, on a fast serve, there's zero chance of me doing that. On a second serve, or if my opponent has a weak serve, that might be possible. But in general, you want to keep your return of serve swings the exact same, even for first or second, because the difference is, if I'm playing someone with a big serve, on the first serve I'm going to block it, and on the second serve I'm also going to take time away from the, from the server, and I'm going to be doing that by moving forward and taking that ball early. That return might be the shortest ball I get in the whole point, so why not take advantage of it straight away and put pressure on my opponent? So once again, the best tip that you can have, the best visual that you can have for this return of serve is going to be behind me there's a brick wall or there's something like a fence that's blocking me from taking that racket too far back. So here I'm waiting for the return, I've done my split step and now the swing should be shorter than this, smaller than this. If I hit the fence it means I've gone too far back. So ideally I want to keep the racket just here on side of me and if I can, I'll use that rotation to generate the swing. Now, if I swing with my arm and I make contact slightly late, the, the ball is quite heavy on the serve. There's not gonna be much supporting that racket head. Whereas if I turn with my shoulder now, I don't do anything with the hand. I just turn the body and I come forward. The racket always stays out in front of my stomach. So on the forehand side, the racket's now in front of my belly. Once I turn, and I use that shoulder rotation and that hip rotation instead of the arm swinging on its own I use that rotation the racket always stays in that same position now it's easy for me to rotate quick compared to swinging quick with my my hand so once again the swing is coming from the rotation not the actual arm There might be a slight swing from the arm, but the main power source is gonna be that rotation. So if on the forehand side, it's gonna go from here, slight rotation, and then forward. And on the backhand, the same thing. Slight rotation, forward. If you're a one-handed player, exact same thing. Slight rotation and then going forward. Wow. Nice. Always on the return, we want to feel that we're going forward to meet the ball out in front. So once again, it's crucial that we're not swinging too big on that return. You're imagining that there's a wall behind you and you're keeping the swing very compact and just going out to meet the ball. Almost like you're catching a ball. If someone was to throw a ball to you, you wouldn't go here and then go forward to catch it. You would simply go right to the ball 
to meet it out in front. And that's exactly what we want to do on the return. We're under pressure. The time isn't that much against the bigger servers. We have to go forward to meet that ball so that we can hit it out in front and actually use our body for the power instead of just the arm. And step number three to having the perfect return of serve is the intention on that return. So on the first serve, your goal is to make the player play. That's your goal. Your goal is to get it back in. It doesn't matter how you do it. If you have to chip the return, that's fine. If you're under pressure, they've hit a really good serve, just chip it back in, get yourself into the point, make the opponent hit a big shot off that first strike. But don't give them a free point by missing that return. Your goal in that first serve is to get it back in play and get yourself into the point. If you can get it into a neutral position where you've hit a, a decent return that has neutralized play, perfect. If you can only make it, still great. Make them hit the next shot. That's your goal on the first serve. On the second serve, you have options. If it's a ball that's a little bit higher and you have a two-hander and it is on your backhand, you can always hit that ball a little bit more aggressive. If the player is uh, serving in a pattern, so you see that they're always serving down the middle and you have a big forehand, sometimes you might run around and hit your forehand just to keep them honest. So you have options on that second serve. The other option is you can come in, you can use a chip and charge, or you could drive the return and come forward. That's something that I like to do a lot because it puts a lot of pressure on that server. When you see someone hitting that second serve and coming forward, that's a big pressure on the brain. So the more pressure you can put on the server, perfect and one of the ways to do that is by hitting that second serve on the rise and coming into net and once again on that second serve you have options you can be aggressive or you could have that same mentality of let's get myself into a neutral position I don't have to be super aggressive but I could be a little bit more aggressive than on the first serve and get myself into a position where I can be attacking or I can be in a neutral position for that next shot so you have your three steps step number one your ready position and timing the split step. Step number two, a compact swing on both sides, so you're ready to go forward to meet the ball. You're ready to cut off the angles. And step number three, your intention on that return. On the first serve, you're trying to get yourself into the point, and on the second serve, you have options. You can be more aggressive, or you can have that mentality of getting myself into a neutral position to begin the point. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below as well. Which part of your game do you struggle with the most? And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel and turn on the uh, notifications because otherwise YouTube just isn't sending people who are subscribed the videos. So make sure you turn on the notifications and see you guys soon. Signing off, Simon from TTT.